Hi everyone, welcome to yet another video where I ask one of my friends to talk about their experience at Cal State East Bay. Hi John. Hello Fatima. Thanks for being part of this video. Yeah, thanks for having me. I did an in-depth series about all the undergraduate computer science classes at Cal State East Bay. I talked about each class individually in terms of like how homework heavy they are and how they relate to the real world in terms of like interviews, getting internships and jobs and stuff like that. And naturally, I got a bunch of questions about the graduate computer science program, and I don't know a lot about that. So let's get to it. What was your yeah. undergrad major and school? I went to UC Berkeley. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. I was part of that bubble that, that thinks UC Berkeley is better than East Bay. But anyway, yeah. I went to UC Berkeley and uh, got my bachelor's in material science and engineering, which um, for the viewers that don't know what that is, it used to be the school of metallurgy. So you know melting metals together and stuff but now they teach like about plastic and other things so they kind of had to be a little more inclusive what made you want to do a computer science master's degree i wanted to go back to school and i wanted to get a degree in computer science and i thought well i've already got a bachelor's i guess i should go for a master's because that's a level above bachelor's there's a variety of reasons why someone would want to pursue a uh, graduate degree one of them is because a lot of times people just because you don't get jobs then the next best thing to do is to just continue on to higher mm -hmm. education another one is because you want to switch careers and in your case you want to switch into tech i wanted to switch into tech and i couldn't get a job so it's really both of those things <laughs> <laughs> because i had actually tried without going back to school for a few years and i did actually land an internship but uh, not a full-time job that I could stick around at. How many classes or units did you take at Cal State before they granted you your master's degree? Let's see, I took 10 undergrad classes and four elective upper grad classes or graduate classes, I should say. And then there was five required classes on the capstone. You and I met in like undergrad <laughs> classes. We were in two classes together on our first semester. What yes. other undergrad classes did you take? So uh, actually my first semester, I took comp sci to discrete structures, assembly, data structures, and programming language concepts. Do you th think you actually learned something in these like prerequisite or in undergraduate classes? I definitely learned learned a few things, uh, especially in assembly. I was really happy they made me take that because I never bothered with assembly or saw reason to, but I definitely uh, learned a lot of appreciation for C++ and all the language features they've got. Also, I really liked um, taking automata because regular expressions I found out was because a math, I think it was a PhD, wanted to do a paper and he invented regular expressions just for his homework. I feel That's like it. you, honest to God, didn't learn anything in like most of your undergrad classes because we took a lot of classes together. And I was sitting right next to you in class and I was just like, my mind was like being blown away. But I felt like you were just like, yeah, okay, all right. I would say something like somewhere in the one third to two thirds range was all just review. And then the rest was things I had forgotten or was, uh, and was relearning or something that I legitimately hadn't seen before. Like I'd never seen regular expressions inside a classroom environment, for example. Undergrad classes or mm -hmm. in your program that would be called the prerequisites, which one do you think was the most useless for you? You could have like gone without. Let's see. Well, I didn't take the ethics class. I was spared that. So I can't say that one. I kind of want to say stats, but it reminded me of a lot of stuff I had forgotten since high school. I think I'll have to go with programming language concepts because it's it kind of is good to know that there's other languages and stuff um, and kind of generally why you might have certain language features in different languages. But A, everybody makes their stupid language stupidly general anyway. <laughs> and B, right. that's the probably the least useful of what I learned. That makes sense. I think it's worth it to clarify that when I say I feel like you weren't learning as much as me, it's not because I think those classes are useless. I've already talked about what value each class mm -hmm. has. It's just that you're a very smart individual. Like, you know so much. And it was kind of at times, I was like, this guy's too smart to be in this class. Yeah, no, it's not a program issue. Before Trugat gave us the, the explanation of why you can go from a DNF to... Wait, no. The, no, maybe it was deterministic and non-deterministic. Before he gave us the explanation for one of those, I actually got bored and daydreamed. 
how that works. Oh, oh, hundred like, percent. <laughs> if you want to know whether automata, like the undergraduate um, automata class, how much value it serves, just take the both of us. We've graduated in May and we've already forgotten all the stupid terminology. <laughs> Those were the prereqs. Makes sense because they would want to like prepare you, and they're assuming that you haven't done a computer science undergraduate degree. Yeah. So they were like, okay, CompSci two, discrete structures, assembly, data structures, PLC, computer architecture, analysis of algorithms, automata, and operating systems. Oh, and and the stats class. Go. What about your actual like graduate courses though? So there's five required ones: the um, advanced algorithms. The theory of computation class, OS design, web systems, and cybersecurity. And I actually liked most of those. One of those was taught by a professor whose style I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Between that and lack, lockdowns, I got one of my two Bs. <laughs> there were also uh, four, what do you call, electives. They're called electives, but they're still in major. I picked the database one. The NoSQL database one with uh, Professor Yang, advanced AI, and uh, topics in computer science and topics in computer networks. There's topics in the undergrad program as well. What classes oh, yeah. did you actually take on their topics of computer science? Yeah. So first, really quickly, I highly recommend any topics class because if the professor cares enough to go through that paperwork, they're going to care about the class. I did definitely enjoy those two that I took. Let's see, the topics in computer science was like uh, machine learning. And uh, the uh, topics in computers network was with Ericsson. Because I was like, I'm going to take another class with Ericsson. Let's go. IoT. That's the IoT class. Yes, the IoT class. What was your most favorite class that you took in your graduate classes? Definitely IoT, but web systems was a close second. Dr. B was also awesome. And I learned a lot in that because just because he made us practice so much, I was like, sweet, I built an entire full stack app. I'm so proud of me. So what did you do for your capstone? So there was three options. Uh, there's the exam, there's the project, and there's the thesis. I picked the project and basically I built a tiny model apartment thing out of a cooler and like parts coming from... Uh, previous projects that uh, Dr. Erickson uh, oversaw. I uh, ran tests with that to see if I could control the overpressure from closing vents. That worked out pretty well. Do you recommend people do the project over the examinations? Definitely. If you if you have the time and energy, just find something you like and, a prof- and or a professor you like and do that. That would be great. I do also remember that the project, you only need to write 50 pages worth of explanation of what you did. And that includes big pictures, so it's actually not as bad as it sounds. And the thesis was like minimum 75 pages. I personally think there's more value in doing an actual project or even a thesis over just doing some standardized testing. Definitely, definitely. Apart from your capstone project and your classes and your own life, what other like CS-related activities were you part of on campus? IEEE, um, I went to the their hackathon and joined the club for a bit. And then there was the hackathons we did together. Cal Hacks and Davis Hacks. That's what it was called. The one we won at. We are champions, yes. And also uh, CodePath, which we mostly did together. Actually, we did the studying part before a little bit separately, didn't we? And of course, I, I TA'd for CS classes a couple of times. How about for interviews? How do you think your education prepared you for getting jobs? Definitely, it was nice to have a lot more practice. I think the biggest thing it did was just that I can put, I've got a master's in CS on my resume, so everyone can look at that and be like, oh, he really does want to do CS. When I took the Google interviews, I had to do lots of basic algorithm type stuff and um, data structures are really important for that. So that my data structures class helped with that. And also the algo classes, um, analysis of algorithms and advanced algorithms. Those have the helpful content that you need for your interview. What about your Bloomberg interviews? They kind of had a wider range of, what should I say, algorithms they wanted you to know. Bloomberg kind of had a wider variety of things. And Google had like more basics kind of things. And other places that I interviewed at had uh, very interesting questions that were just like kind of all over the place. So I get this like very general 
question that's kind of like do you think that East Bay is a good school for getting a master's degree I mean I would say if you could go to a school with name recognition that literally everyone recognizes like MIT go for that but otherwise I don't think it matters too much and you definitely get the ratio of education to price at East Bay is uh, very high that's Which is nice. why we made it to that list that's our thing man like we <laughs> you think you might not spend a lot. We're the Walmart of universities. <laughs> okay, well, that's the questions that I was asked to um, bring up. And I hope that this was helpful in some way to anyone who's considering a master's degree in computer science or anyone who is like considering to go to Cal State East Bay to get a master's degree. Obviously, we're not like recruiters for Cal State East Bay. This is just kind of like a, like a Yelp review, like a Google review of this campus. If it is on the table, if you are considering East Bay, maybe it's the price, maybe it's the location. I don't know. Whatever the reason is. Talk to me. <coughs> <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus Christ. God help me. What's that? <laughs>